Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at pie charts with bokeh. Let's get started. So the other day I had an email from someone asking to help with some pie charts. And I thought we haven't actually done pie charts on the channel, so we're going to take a look at them. And we'll maybe take one or two videos to kind of play around with them. So first off, let's go on and create up a new uh, file here. And I'm going to call this uh, bokeh... Uh, pie chart, let's say one for now, since I probably plan on making at least one more video on these. And let's also go on and get some basic imports in. So first off, since we're dealing with, and we're going to be dealing with uh, Bokeh's um, smaller, uh, some the wedge, function, okay? We'll, we'll need to also use pi, okay, from math. So let's go on and do something like from math import pi. And then we'll also import, because we're going to need some data, import pandas as pd. Let's also from bokeh dot palette import uh, category, what do we want? Let's do uh, category, and I want 20C. Uh, and then let's also do from bokeh.plotting. Let's import figure and show. Then we also want from bokeh.transform. Let's import cumulative sum. And then from bokeh.sampledata.olympics. Uh, 2014, we're going to import the data. And then from this, we need to actually, this data set here, okay, is actually going to wind up, it's actually a JSON uh, data set. And so maybe we can, we can actually do that if we want. We can do print data here really quickly. And let's run this. And then we can take a look here. Oops. Let me run down here. And you can see here, it's a nice big mess of data, okay? But let me go to here. And you can see here that it has, for example, like count, object, data. Now we need to actually go ahead and grab this data from there. So from this item that we're calling data, we're going to grab data. And then it is a JSON, okay? So that object is. So let's go on and actually grab that. So, and we want to turn this into, so it's a JSON normalize data of data, okay? So we're going to be cleaning and grabbing that data object from there, and we're going to be turning it into a data frame. So let's do uh, from that data frame. Actually, you know what, let's, just so you guys can see it, let's do dot head, oops. I'm going to run this and I need to clean up this a little bit. But here you can see here that we have name, abbreviation, the number of gold medals, total medals, silver medals, bronze medals. Today we're only going to be looking at the bronze medal totals. Okay, so, and we'll maybe look at the country name as well. So let me go in and clear that for now. And let's do a little bit of filtering. So... What do we want here? Let's do yeah, a data frame is our data frame uh, metal dot total. And you know what? Actually, before anything, I don't really like having those dots in my values. So let's actually go on and do a little bit of renaming. And so I'm interested in the columns here. And we want... I'm going to change name to country. And then I'm also going to change the uh, metal, was it metals total? Metals dot total to, uh, let's just say metals. Okay, and we'll do in place is true. Let's give that a little bit of space there. 
So let's go on then and say df is equal to our data frame of our metals. And let's say that we want only those that had eight metals or more. So kind of the, the big countries. And then we also want to do something like df. And you know what? Let me, let's actually do this and do uh, print the data frame of our country uh, dot, uh, oh, dot, dot unique. And let's take a look. Okay, so now we have a nice list here of all of the countries that we have in our data set. So we have Austria, Canada, France, Germany, Netherlands, Norway, uh, Russian Federation, Sweden, Switzerland, United States. So we'll only have those. And again, that really uh, made everything a, just a little bit smaller than what we wanted to, which is nice. Um, so let's also go on then. And uh, the first thing we need to actually do is create an angle variable here. And this is going to allow us to create an angle based on our number of metals that each country has. So remember, this is the total metals that they have. And so we want the metals divided by the metals dot sum. Okay, not the cumulative sum, the sum. Okay, now the next part is important here. We would then want to multiply everything by 2 pi. Okay, and this is going to allow us to get the proper angles that we need. And then let's go on and deal with our colors. So we're going to use our category uh, 20C, and we want this the length of our data frame. So now we can go on and actually uh, create our figures. So we have some plot. Uh, we'll do figure. We want a height here of, what do we want? Height, let's say, of 600. Uh, and we'll do, what do we want for uh, our title? Let's do, let's create a title here of, of let's say, it's the 2014 Olympic medal totals uh, by country. Then we want our, let's set our toolbar. Location to be none. We want our tools to be, uh, let's just set it to hover. For now, our tool tip here, uh, tips is going to be, we want the country name with a colon, and then let's have at metals, and then um, I don't think we actually need any indicator there, but we could have put some sort of indicator if we wanted to. <clears throat> and then let's go on and say we want our, whoops. We want our X range, range here to be between negative 0 0.5 and 1.0, okay? And then the next part is to actually create up the wedge itself. So let me move that up a little bit. So we have P dot wedge, and then we want X to equal 0, Y to equal to equal one with a radius here of 0 0.4. Uh, and then we need a start angle here. And this is going to be the cumulative sum of our angle variable. Whoops.
So cumulative sum of our angle variable. Oops. And then we want in here to include zero is true. Oops. Got too many of those in there. Okay, and then we'll have our angle here is going to be our end angle, sorry. We did a start angle, we want our end angle in here to be the cumulative sum of just angle. And then let's set our line color here to white. We want our fill color to be our color. And then we want our legend field. Field, uh, we want, let's make it color, not color, country. Whoops, I don't want to run that right now. And then, <clears throat> Let's do our source is going to be our data frame. Now, after our data frame, let's go on and if we go, if we can run this now, but it's definitely not going to look uh, the way we want to. Uh, let's go on and do something like p.axis.axis label is equal to none. And we want p.axis.visible to equal false. And p.grid.grid line color to equal none. Okay. And because again, if you don't do this, it's going to look hideous. Okay. It's going to have grid lines all over the place. It's going to have labels all over the place. And we don't want that. We want this just to look just like a nice looking. Uh, well, a nice looking plot itself. So let's go on and add our show P and we can give that a run and make sure there's no errors in here. Whoops, and let me tell this to trash this. Run. Oh, and we're missing an issue here, wedge. And then we can take a look here at our graph. So as we can see here, now we have all of the countries as well as their number medals in their nice hover. Now one thing that we may want to do uh, in the next video is we may want to add in some sort of indicator inside of each of these, okay, instead of just having it as a pop-up, maybe have something that says, uh, like for example, we can get rid of the legend. So nice looking like something that has each of the abbreviations inside as well, so that we don't have to hover over them and we don't necessarily have the legend. If you guys like this, please comment, subscribe, and hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.